Hi! So how do you get your mojo back when you haven't been painting for a while and you want to, you want to start painting again but you're just not feeling it? And it can be such a hurdle that you find yourself procrastinating, finding lots of other little jobs that need doing, things that, you know, a bit of house cleaning, a bit of gardening, all sorts of other things that are just all of a sudden very pressing. Just know that this is normal. This doesn't mean that you're not an artist. In fact, it probably means that you are an artist because if you sort of have that fear or self-doubt, then, um, you know, it means that you are pressing into the unknown. And that's what artists do. They create something out of nothing. They create something that they've never created before. So they're always stepping into the unknown. And when you're stepping into the unknown, there's always a little bit of fear and uncertainty, a little bit of insecurity around that. So if that's what you're feeling, then you're an artist and that's normal. So just feel the feeling, but push it to one side and shelve it. The next thing you have to do is actually do some work because inspiration, the joy, the your mojo, the energy, the, the love of what you do comes when you actually are in creating. And this is what happened to me recently. I had been um, uh, working on these guys, these little paintings, and I needed to get back to them. So I desperately want to finish them off. I think we had had, oh, we'd had a run of good weather. And so I really did have to get into the garden. So I did that and I loved it. And then I wanted to get back to my painting, but I was feeling that the longer I had left it and was in the garden and was doing other things, um, you know, the, these little self-doubt things were coming back and I was thinking, oh God, am I going to be able to fix those paintings? Am I, you know, are they really finished? Doubts about the ones that I had finished? All of that. So I thought to myself, how am I going to get back in without, without this being too hard? So I didn't go back to the paintings. So that's the first thing. Don't, don't try and go back to something that um, you have any degree of investment in. So if you've been doing a painting that is nearly finished or you've spent a lot of time in it and you don't want to ruin it, that's not where you start. You start with where the bar is really low. And so what I did was I um, just, I play a little game with myself. I give myself some parameters and it's just, uh, I just start with exploring and just uh, making it a game. This game was I'm going to start and every time I do something, I'm going to start with one thing and every time I do the next thing, it has to be something quite different. It has to be either a different um, tool, different media, different type of mark, but it has to be really different. So that if I make one mark and then I'm going on to doing the next thing, I can't repeat what I've just done. I have to do something different. And so that's what I did. And um, I mean, the result is okay. It's, not, it's in my sketchbook, so it doesn't matter. It's just exploratory. And um, it wasn't long before I was starting to feel the sort of the juices flowing again. The, I was starting to feel energized and, oh, I like this and, you know, getting those reactions. And once, you're, once you get those reactions, that's the, like the little rolling stone that gathers the moss. It's, it's, that starts to build. And then you find you're back in it. The doubts are going. You think, oh, yes, I can do this. I do love this. This is what I love to do. And once you're feeling like that, then off you go. You're into it. So anyway, come and watch me as I make this do make do this sort of play this game in my sketchbook, and we'll, I'll show you where I ended up. So here's my sketchbook, and the first thing I do is um, spread some black paint on with my color shaper. Now look at these beautiful marks. Now, how wouldn't that bring the juices back and make you um, want to start painting again just to make those lovely marks? And that's simply just using black on white paper. Okay, so following the rule of this game is now I have to do something different. So I'm taking a pencil and in a section on this um, base, I'm just writing some words. And 
Then I do something different again and get the color shaper and with some color I'm going to put a block of color on there. And um, this shows you what the color shaper does. You're going to get a nice thick bit of paint and then contrast that with sort of transparent paint that you can see the movement of the paint as it's been applied. Okay, now I'm doing something different again. This time painting really carefully. So when I put the paint on uh, with the color shaper, it was very sort of um, haphazard, done quickly, and just allowing the tool to um, kind of make the marks and see what would happen. This time I'm being much more intentional. I'm actually creating a pattern, and I'm being very careful with edges, and I'm selecting different colors, and um, I'm just sort of creating a block here of pattern and uh, using the edge of that straight edge to create some lines <clears throat> and then filling the, those little shapes in with a crayon. So that's something different again. Uh, and I'm just finishing off this block. I'm making everything slightly different when I do it so that there isn't a sort of a uniformity about it. Now this bit of paint I've added with a paintbrush and this bit of paint I'm putting on with the um, colour shaper again, different colour this time. And this time I'm being quite careful with the edges of that block. And then uh, to mix it up and add something very different I'm adding a little bit of collage which has got some drawn line and a little block of dark as well. Now coming in with the colour shaper and bringing in a whole lot of white because I want to create a much bigger area of light and then allowing the colour shaper to, cre to create some different sort of effects as I'm putting that plain paint on. Scratching back through um, to sort of create a veiled sort of area and then now I'm using a comb and I'm getting marks with the comb scratching through the wet paint so that's making a different sort of mark. Okay that was a sort of a wandery scratchy mark now I'm being very um, careful with ruling some lines so that's a different type of line and I'm changing the color of the pencil and I'm changing the way that I'm using it so here I'm really starting to scribble now really loose sort of close scribbling and now I'm introducing some um, ink, some acrylic ink, and um, spreading that around uh, with a thing. So then I added some paint uh, shapes, and now scratching through with a pencil and drawing over the top of it. Coming back in with the color shaper, uh, doing thin paint, sort of um, transparent paint, and um, putting some paint over on that side as well, just sort of moving it about with the colour shaper. And now I'm sort of starting to look at this as a composition and I'm back in the groove and I'm just exploring and experimenting and playing with line and shapes and drawing and um, all sorts of different things that I'm bringing into here. So this is still f sort of loosely following this game of making sure that everything I do is different from the last thing. Um, but I'm sort of being a little bit analytical as well, looking at the whole composition, deciding whether I want things, whether I want to keep things or not. So um, here, adding in more sort of careful line and then smudging it through. And having decided I didn't like much of that. I've just gone over the top and now I'm making a dark area at the bottom over here and using the colour shaper to push that paint away so I can see what's underneath. Now trying to integrate that line into it and bringing through what was underneath in parts just so that that block of white is a little bit more interesting. Spreading it down, spreading the paint down, and I like the yellow, so now I'm deciding I'm going to have more of that yellow in this painting. So bringing that through in a sort of wandery, big cloud-like shape at the top, and then a, a sort of a, a 
solid shape down the bottom. So now I'm sort of looking at the whole composition and trying to make it more successful. So I'm sort of leaving the game behind a little bit. But that's the purpose of the game, is to get you in the game of making an artwork. And look at all the lovely differences that are, that are appearing on the surface just because I have forced myself to do something different every time I've added something into this painting. And now I'm bringing in a little bit of collage at the very end, which just um, gives me a lovely mark and um, adds another difference to this composition. <laughs>